What to do, ladies and gentlemen? It is the vulgar one, the vulgar son, the vulgar desperado. Back at it with another quick review. Today, I'm gonna go over that '90s show, the new Netflix spinoff of that '70s show, and yeah, it sucks. <laughs> So first things first, if you're not familiar with that 70s show, I do recommend checking it out. You can probably catch it on Peacock or maybe go buy a DVD box set. Nothing wrong with adding to the collection. Pretty simple premise of a show. Um, basically a group of friends that hang out in a basement and you know, kind of get into some adventures. I'd liken it to like a teenage version of Seinfeld in the sense that it's a show kind of about nothing. Literally just a group of friends doing their thing and making jokes and getting high <laughs> you know so it's actually a pretty good show i'd say a classic of the 90s classic of the 90s era not even so much the 90s i should say like 90s early 2000s um humor you know a lot of hum a lot of sex jokes a lot of weed jokes you know that kind of shit and honestly it's good it still holds up it's pretty classic in my opinion and anyone kind of born and raised in that time that watched it probably has some good things to say about the show you got some pretty good and big actors that came out there ashton kutcher mila kunis topher grace uh wilder Bamarada, uh, danny masterson and gosh i'm forgetting donna's name but you know you have a lot of actors in there a lot of guest spots it's overall a really good show I don't, I mean, I have the complete series box set in this old school kind of like secret stash box that they call. You can look it up online. I don't think they sell it anymore, but whatever. It's a good show. However, this new one, man, what can I say? It's a Netflix show. So as you know, Netflix is just gonna Netflix. You got your obligatory black character, obligatory gay character, obligatory feminist woke empowered female jokes the whole nine yards and more importantly it's not funny you know i'm literally like five episodes in and i don't think i'm going to finish because i find it more of a waste of time than anything um there's little hee-haw moments where you're like okay that was all right but this is where they kind of get you um overall again it's not funny but the times that it is funny are usually involving the old cast. So you're going to see a lot of guest spots from, you know, the original kids and the parents, Red and Kitty, and apparently Bob and, you know, whoever as Leo, they all make appearances. And those moments are genuinely pretty good and pretty funny. They feel like what it was. With these new kids, though, it's just trash like i'm gonna play some examples and if the youtube gods let me you know not get a copyright you'll get to see what i'm talking about and mind the poor recording of it haven't found another way to do it still a new youtuber but the point being is these new kids just try to act like the old kids of the 70s show and it's not working for me along with the whole overall plot and premises I mean, I'll say that a show called This 90s Show, kind of based off of that 70s show, on paper sounds like it could work. Now, granted, spinoffs, the era we live in, none of that shit works. We all know that. That being said, it's not a bad idea. You can actually make it work if you try a little bit harder. And that's not what we're getting here. We're getting like tired, trite jokes that are kind of trying to bank off your 90s knowledge along with what they perceive to be stoner humor right like that's kind of the sad part about it they don't know what's funny like peep this clip here that i'm about to show it's just kind of eh. <laughs> hold up there's a warehouse rave in milwaukee i need this i want to go somewhere where i don't have to hold back you've been holding back you have no idea Last time I went to a rave, I stayed up for two days. Turns out, if a mint is 40 bucks, it's not a mint. <laughs> Great story. All right, so look, everyone's got their own sense of humor. Maybe that was funny to somebody. 
but you take out that laugh track and I don't think anybody's fucking laughing, <laughs> honestly, like, the jokes aren't hitting, the logic is not hitting 40 bucks for a mint, who would even, like, pay for that, even if you were trying to score, like, it's just, it's just, like I said, it's just not funny, and I think that's kind of the shame of it, is it's just not funny, you know, now, as you saw in that one clip there, and I'll pull up some other ones, you got your obligatory gay dude and your obligatory black chick who's all empowered, and they're not the worst of woke characters I've seen, you know, peep my review of Velma, as everybody knows, we know how bad it can get, but at least with those characters, it's just, again, it's just trite, that's my whole thing about it, you know, we're way past the, what is it, Will and Grace, I don't fucking know, like, whatever, where you have that snarky gay kid on the show, and he's, like, funny, because he's got the jabs and bars, like, he's, you know, funny, and this kid is not funny, he's just kind of, like, mean to be mean, and it just doesn't work. Doll burgers. What are you doing out of the basement? Calling in like I see it. <laughs> oh, here's the kitchen. Wild. <laughs> Hi. Clearly. It's like he's one aspect of Jackie, and I don't know, Jackie, as bitchy as she was, was a great character, and it only works when you kind of put everything in it all together and that's kind of how i feel like a lot of these characters are same thing with the empowered black chick placing all of your value in the hands of a man is just giving it away and the direct result of living in an oppressive patriarchal society she read the right girl manifesto and won't shut up about it <laughs> so in a way she's like part donna you know that feminist side to the character um I feel like even with the dudes, too, I mean, one of the dudes is a Kelso, the other one is almost as dumb as a Kelso, but he's not a Kelso, and the black chick is also kind of like Hyde with her little anarchy ways. Um, the main chick, Leia, obviously is the Eric of the group, but she's uh, much more Eric and dorky than Eric ever was, in my personal opinion. Then you got, the again, the Asian kid who's kind of like the Fez. But not really the Fez. I mean, I guess he's kind of like Fez's gay side. Like, if anyone remembers the show, Fez versus Fenton, that's when you'd really see that shit. Oh. It's you. <laughs> Fenton. They even try to bring in this other woman into the show who's, I guess, supposed to be like the Bob, you know, or the Bob and Mitch combined, whatever. Like, she lives next to them, you know, in the Pinciotti's old home, and she's kind of trash, kind of like Bob, and has that Wisconsin accent. <laughs> no, that wasn't that good. And, I mean, look at this kid here, you know, he's Kelso's son, and, you know, he even tries to act like Kelso in ways. It's just watered down stereotypical versions of the old cast that only embodies one aspect of that character in a whole new person so it just doesn't work because they're just stereotypes and not good ones and of course speaking of stereotypes there's a lot of callbacks and jokes and references to things that were going on in the 90s like the dare t-shirt and you know it'd be funny but generally most people are over that nostalgia bait at this point then you have the transitions that they try to mimic, you know, from the old show and including the circle like they used to do on the old show. And again, the problem is it just doesn't work. At least with the circle, you know, the jokes are just not funny. You gotta, you're gonna have a bunch of people in a circle high off their rocker. Somebody's gotta be hitting the fucking jokes. These kids act like... I don't even fucking know, like, I would make the argument that whoever was the writers on this shit used to write for Nickelodeon or Disney Channel, because a lot of the humor, a lot of the plots, and the character development, especially with Leia, it's very much reminiscent of some fucking, I don't know, Hannah Montana ass kind of show, like, her, her arcs are deprived from something from the Disney Channel. Take Exhibit A here. She, Leia, is all kinds of butthurt and worried that she's not going to be cool and fit in. And, you know, they have this movie night and she storms off because she's all sad because it wasn't the right movie, I guess. And it's just kind of like, did they watch the first show? Like, these aren't concerns that, you know, this solid group of friends had. And mind you, I think, you know, I understand, like, she's the new girl of the clique. She's trying to acclimate. But... 
that's where, you know, you kind of messed up in the story arc. You should have already made her friends with it. That 70s show starts off with all of them friends. Fez is the new kid, but they take him under his wing relatively quickly. Maybe they should have skipped this bullshit because who really wants homegirl or wants to watch homegirl being all sad about, no, I don't know if I'm cool enough to be friends with you guys. It's not just about your basement, dummy. If you're stressing about me, we're good. And if you're worried about fitting in with everyone else, you found the people who don't fit in. And I am their queen. <laughs> Never had a friend like you. I know. And look, everybody's got their individual taste. Everybody's going to like what they want to like. I'm not here to judge, but I will tell you, I found it kind of corny. This is something off the Disney Channel and not necessarily something off of a raunchy comedy that used to come on in the evenings on Fox. You know, remember where this show came from. And then you have this slip. If you're looking at the screen, it's like she's literally trying to get her first kiss in the mall. And, you know, I mean, yeah, they had similar episodes in the past with Fez trying to get laid and grab an ass at the Piggly Wiggly. I know. Oh, I get it and you know it's kind of maybe supposed to be different from the girl perspective but it really just reminded me of like a kid show off of Nickelodeon where you know the girl is just overtly dorky and not even to a realistic standpoint I mean this girl is literally hounding men trying to get a kiss and it's just unbelievable more than anything I mean let's be real if some chick was like hey let's make out like it's just gonna happen so it's just kind of a dumb storyline to build off of and try to express or show rather how dorky and geeky she is maybe just i don't know skip that shit maybe make him like not so dorky because remember eric as nerdy as he was still bagged on it other chicks did like him too he wasn't as dorky as what they're trying to maybe mimic here and i get they're maybe trying to do something different but i'd argue that it's not working now to wrap this up with something positive if you stuck with me this long overall some of the cameos are hitting they're not too bad they're pretty funny and it's you know nice to see where these characters ended up after all these years even if they don't do it to the best of tea i don't think jackie and kelso excuse me you know should have got together and she should have stayed with fez but you know it's still entertaining these dudes are still pretty funny so that's cool but again, I think, you know, overall, it, and here's another compliment. It's not the wokest piece of trash I've ever seen. It's just not that good, you know. I mean, Velma takes that cake, or maybe She-Hulk in the sense of wokeness. But, you know, because even with the obligatory characters, it's, you know, not like overtly offensive or anything like that. Like Velma was just outright disrespectful. With these characters, it's more along the lines of they're kind of boring. They haven't really shown me anything that makes me care or want to, you know, further this show and even in the sense of their acting because many of them I feel like are trying to mimic the characters that they're kind of based off of it just doesn't work they need to be more original but hey what do I fucking know I mean it's okay some people might like it some people might not I can tell you it's not the worst thing so you know watch at your own risk but that's it for me, y'all. That's another quick review, a little longer than I wanted it to be. But hopefully you stuck with me this long. If you know what it is, Vulgar One, Vulgar Son, Vulgar Desperado, representing the Jabber Jaws. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace.